This is Michael Orl of mobileburn.com and today we're going to take a look at the Samsung S7550, a device better known as Blue Earth. It's Samsung's first solar powered device. As is somewhat appropriate for an eco-friendly device like this, so this review unit has actually been recycled a few times. So you can see the box is a little bit beat up, so everything's not brand new, but we're still going to show you what comes inside. So uh, you can see obviously recycled materials on the box and let's open it up. And here you can see, take a look, it's suggesting in here that you reuse the cardboard type materials in the box as uh, picture frames and things like that. So kind of interesting. Uh, here's the phone itself. Uh, we'll take a better look at that a little bit later on, but you can see that nice large solar panel there on the back. Well, we'll set it aside for now. Pull out the box. Um, and this is what Samsung wants you to get creative with, making picture frames. You can see the little pull out the back here so you can uh, put a photo in there or something. Kind of cute. Five star rated uh, charger. This is an EU charger of course. Um, this device not being sold directly in the United States at this point in time. We have a pair of 3.5 millimeter headphones. Nice, uh, nice looking earbuds. You can see the jack right there. And those mate up with a micro USB adapter and um, the three and a half millimeter adapter right here with a tie clip, pocket clip kind of thing like that. And that's about it. Now we don't really have even the manuals in this one. I'm uh, presuming they probably there was something there, a CD or something with uh, manuals or maybe at least something, a piece of paper saying to find the documentation online. But um, with this recycled review unit, we don't have that, so. So here's the Blue Earth itself, and uh, I have to admit, I think this is one of the best looking Samsung devices ever built. E even with the solar cell, because uh, as a kind of a geek thing, the solar cell appeals to me, but beautiful paint, um, you know, faded blue paint on the um, body of the device. It really is a very, very attractive device. Also feels quite solid, which I'm, I'm pleased to report. In terms of uh, hardware controls, we've got the call end and call send buttons. Call end also does double duty for power. You can see the little indicator right there. This center button here uh, it acts as a back button, also brings up uh, sh some shortcuts, and I'll show you that a little bit later. Volume control on the left hand edge, a lanyard fixing loop there in the corner. Here's the micro USB connector um, for power headsets and stuff like that. A lock, unlock button, and a camera shutter button. On the back, of course, we have this lovely solar cell panel, which uh, recharges the phone. And there's a 3.2 megapixel camera on the back as well. The display is a very nice uh, wide QVGA unit. It's uh, three inches across the diagonal here, so really nice uh, capacitive touchscreen. If you want to get a better idea of what's going on with the Blue Earth in terms of the solar panel, let's just pop this off and you can see Panels are uh, self-contained. There's two contacts here for charging that match up with these two contacts here. I've already inserted an AT&T SIM card into this device, but um, it is not really compatible um, with AT&T's network fully. It supports quad-band GSM Edge, so it'll work pretty much anywhere in the world, but 3G HSDPA data and everything only comes across on the 900 and 2100 megahertz bands like you see in Europe and some other parts of the world. Uh, in addition to the SIM card slot, we've got a micro SDHC card slot, so you can put in an expandable memory card, you know, 8 gig, 16 gig probably. Um, here's the battery, of course. Nothing too huge. Let's see if there's a milliamp rating on it. Doesn't appear to be. Um, it's not very big, though. I'm guessing, you know, more than, say, um, 900. Oh, there it is. It's 1,080 milliamp hours. Let's stick that back in there. Um, this back itself adds a bit of the weight to the device. Um, it weighs almost one ounce itself, 25 grams. Um, but I think it's uh, pretty cool how it's all self-contained and it looks like something you could easily adapt to other devices. Um, you know, or Samsung could, not, not the lay consumer of course, but I uh, wouldn't mind seeing this uh, on other devices. I just wonder how much it adds to the cost of the device and at this point I don't really know what the cost is. So now we'll power up the device. Display is pretty nice on this phone. See, there's a front facing camera for uh, video calls and stuff inside countries with networks that support that, not here in the US. 
device is now powered up and you can immediately recognize the TouchWiz interface and since this is one of the newer versions of TouchWiz you can see there's three little indicators there showing that we have three different home screens to work with. As with all TouchWiz devices, you know, the widget tray comes out here and then you can just grab and drag a widget on and then uh, drag it back when you don't need it. But like other TouchWiz systems, it gets very messy. Uh, the tray gets um, easily disorganized. Widgets resize themselves and then move and uh, it's really kind of a pain. I've never been a fan of TouchWiz and um, this device really hasn't changed my opinion of that. But there are some cool widgets available, you know, for controlling the music, uh, getting to settings, and even a widget for the Eco Walk system that comes on the Blue Earth. Um, shows you how far you're walking and things like that, and how many trees you're saving by reducing your carbon footprint. I haven't found it to be uh, particularly accurate as far as uh, pedometer functions go, but it's still a cool idea. If we pull up the main menu here, you can see there's also three different main menu screens. And one of the cool things is you can actually rename them so you can organize them as you like and say, you know, this one's for um, you know, utilities maybe or something like that. Here's the EcoWalk application itself. You can see it says I've taken 26 steps since uh, starting this, but um, actually it's way low. Go into settings here and I'll show you another eco-friendly setting here. It's called eco mode and what it does is automatically reduces the backlight duration and uh, reduces the backlight intensity to save power. Now, of course that's important because you can run this phone without a charger conceivably because of the solar panel on the back and I'll show you how that works a little bit later. I'm going to show you how the solar cell charging works. Look at the battery indicator at the top of the display. As I move the back of the phone towards a brighter light source you can see it turns red and shows a little sunshine indicator there indicates that it's charging I turn back away from the sun it'll go blue and indicate that it's no longer charging so if you want to charge the phone just put it um, face down towards in some sunlight even incandescent light or fluorescent lighting inside the house and it'll still charge up I'm going to start up the 3.2 megapixel camera on the device by just a quick press on the shutter button here very simple easy to use camera I tap on the screen to make the controls come up or go away. We've seen this on a number of uh, Samsung devices. Pretty easy to use. Sometimes a little bit um, tap happy. You have to tap a few too many times to get to things, but um, it works overall. Just simply press the shutter button to take the photo. And there you go. Bring up the uh, gallery mode. We can take a look at the photos on the device. Some of the photos I've gone through. If you go into the main menu, there's also another photo browser. This one organizes things by date, showing some of the wallpapers there and then some of the photos I've taken. Tap on the photo again and um, go through and look at the photos. And they, they come out out of order often. I'm not sure what's going on there. You can see I just took that. It's the last picture, but there's pictures before and after that were taken today. You can see the numbers aren't always in order, which is kind of odd. Um, one thing you'll notice is that even though there is an, obviously an accelerometer in this phone, it doesn't work for uh, changing orientation in the browser. You can use it to kind of um, tilt through your photos. Uh, interesting but uh, not nearly as useful as um, automatic rotation in terms of uh, looking at the photos. Um, go to one of these photos here and then zoom in a bit. Do that by long pressing on the screen normally, at least in the other versions. It's a little annoying here. It's uh, really not the best photo view. We'll see if we can get it by going back to the camera. Yeah, not having much luck. There we go. There's the zoom function I was looking for. You long press the screen and then drag your finger up or down. Uh, why it doesn't work in the other application, I don't know, but the device does support video, of course. Change the mode here. 
activate the camera with the shutter button and just move around a little bit so you can see that it does in fact work and then we'll tap on the stop button and go into the gallery so we can take a quick look at the video activate the camera with the shutter button and just move around a little bit volume control on the side controls volume of course and then we'll tap on the so you can see it does manage to take video you can look at the resolutions that was QVGA resolution you can shoot at a lower resolution if you like I'm not sure why you would want to do that though because QVGA is already pretty small in terms of resolution